Hello, this is Faster Montgomery and Double Add Ladders for Short Fire Stress Curves. I'm Mike Hamburg at Rambus. So the goal here uh, is to speed up elliptic curve scalar multiplication. So for this problem, we're given an elliptic curve E, a point P on that curve, and a scalar K, which is just an integer, and we wish to compute K times P, another point on the elliptic curve. More specifically, we'll be working with short Weierstrass curves, which are the most common and most general form of elliptic curve used in cryptography. And we're given only k and p, so we don't have access to, for example, a pre-computed table that has multiples of p. And we're looking to produce a regular algorithm, which is uh, better for side channel resistance. So in a regular algorithm, uh, no matter what k is, the algorithm always does the same operations in the same order, um, although possibly swapping the data depending on what k is. Um, so, depending on the protocol, in some cases p is given as x and y coordinates, and in some cases only the x coordinate is given, and only the x coordinate of the output is desired. So we'll handle both of those cases. The main application of this is elliptic curve to Hellman key exchange, but in an embedded device it would also be very useful for uh, ECDSA signatures, key generation, and so on. Um, so the algorithms that we'll be using are called the Montgomery and Joa or double add ladders. Um, so for these ladder algorithms, we take two point registers, uh, Q and R, or P and Q, and we initialize them with the base point, P0, or with double the base point. And then we scan through the bits of the scalar. So for the Montgomery ladder, we scan through from most significant down to least significant, whereas for the Joie ladder, we scan from least significant up to most significant. At each uh, step, we conditionally swap the two points in the latter state, and then we double one of them and add it to the other points. And then at the end, one of the points in the latter state is the desired output. The ladder that I'll be working with in this paper is a three-point ladder. Um, so by adding either the difference of the two points to the Montgomery ladder, or the sum of the two points to the Joie ladder, um, we get uh, a ladder in which the state is wider, but this may help with the ladder operation. Um, and in both cases, for the three-point ladder, the ladder operation takes P, Q, and R, and has to output P, Q plus R, and 2R. Um, furthermore, we're given um, at the beginning of this ladder step that R is Q plus P, or possibly due to swapping, Q minus P. Um, now, it's worth noting that the representations of these three points in the ladder state need not be the same. So, for example, in some of our uh, formulas, we will be representing the x-coordinate uh, of p, q, and r, but the y-coordinate only of p. However, for the Montgomery ladder, q and r have to have the same representation because you have to swap them with each other conditionally. And likewise, for the Joie ladder, p and q have to set, have the same representation. So, so this will constrain the way that we can represent the ladder state. There's been a lot of previous work on the subject of Montgomery ladders, starting, of course, with Montgomery's work in 1987, which applies to the, only to the so-called Montgomery curves. Um, it is, however, extremely efficient for these curves. For short Weierstrass curves, the more common case, uh, the Montgomery ladder has been less efficient, but has slowly been improving in efficiency over the past decade or so. Um, so down from 14 multiplies per bit in 2011, down to 12 multiplies per bit in 2017, down to 11 multiplies per bit today. Um, so we'll be using for, for this work Jacobian coordinates. Um, so it's well known that it's best to represent the x and y coordinates of the elliptic curve in a projective form, such as x over z and y over z, so as to defer the costly division to the end of the algorithm. Um, however, uh, in some cases, it's better to instead use x over z squared and y over z cubed, because this homogenizes the leading term of the curve equation uh, with a z to the sixth term. Um, it's worth noting that z equals zero is allowed, and in fact there is a point on the elliptic curve which is at infinity, um, which is the neutral point of the curve, or the identity point of the curve. Um, this is represented with non-zero coordinates for x and y, uh, but a zero coordinate for z. Um, However, if you ever get to the state uh, 0, 0, 0, where x, y, and z are all 0, um, then you failed because you're representing the state as 0 over 0. Um, it's also possible, instead of storing each uh, a separate z-coordinate for each point, to store the three points so that they all have the same z-coordinate. 
Um, so there's a, the main benefit to this is that the first step of a point addition is typically to rescale the points so that they have the same z coordinates so that you can subtract their x and y coordinates. Um, so this is actually somewhat expensive, especially for Jacobian coordinates where you have to compute z squared and z cubed. Um, so you might be able to save this if you could sort of statically guarantee that the three points all have the same z coordinate. Um, and it may be less expensive to maintain this invariant than it is to rescale the, the z coordinates um, during the operation itself. Uh, furthermore, you save, uh, instead of storing three z coordinates, you have to store only one of them, or in fact, none at all. And the reason is that, well, the main reason in, in the regular uh, ladder operations that you need the z coordinates is so that you can rescale the points so that they have the same z. Um, and here, you're just sort of guaranteeing that they have the same z. So you don't need it for that reason, but you do need it at the end of the ladder to divide by so that you can get the final output. However, um, depending on how the ladder is constructed, you may be able to solve for z um, instead of uh, tracking it through the ladder step. There is, however, a significant downside to cozy ladders for all their advantages. And this is that uh, you always fail if any one of the points p, q, or r becomes the neutral point. This is because the neutral point has z equals zero. So suppose that q becomes the neutral point. It has z equals zero, but all three points have the same z coordinate. So they also have z equals zero. And therefore, their representation is this invalid 0 over 0 representation. Uh, our work today is based on the Kim et al. formulas from 2017. So this improved uh, the state of the art from 14 down to 12 multiplications per bit. Um, the, the representation that they use is a cozy representation that has seven different coordinates of somewhat complex interpretation. Um, this interpretation depends on an additional bit b, which depends on the key bits. Um, and in fact, the latter uses two key bits instead of only one. Um, however, uh, also in 2017, after reading this paper, I distilled it down to um, a simpler and faster set of formulas that I presented at the Chess 2017 rump session. Um, so from this, I would say that the, the key insight, at least of the distilled version, um, is that the three points P, Q, and R, or rather P, Q, and minus R, uh, or something similar depending on the sign, um, add to zero, which means that they all lie on a line intersected with the elliptic curve. Um, this line has some slope, and it's better to calculate um, and store that slope rather than calculating and storing the y-coordinates of all the points. Um, a second insight, which is especially useful in the work today, is that for the addition formulas um, for elliptic curve points, you need the difference of x-coordinates um, uh, or perhaps the difference of y coordinates, but not the x coordinates themselves. Um, so it may be that you can save effort by calculating directly the difference of the coordinates instead of calculating the coordinates and subtracting them. So for the 2017 formulas, uh, I used a modified Jacobian state in which um, the x coordinates are represented with x q and x r, which have to have the same representation because they're going to be swapped, as their difference from the x coordinate of p multiplied, of course, by z squared, which is a Jacobian form, um, whereas xp is represented directly. Furthermore, only the y-coordinate of p is stored and not of q or r, and the slope m is stored, and it's got a, power, a single power of z, so that when you multiply it by an x difference, um, which has z squared, you get a y difference, which, which has z cubed. Um, one mistake in those original formulas, at least from a performance point of view, is that m is stored doubled as 2mz. Um, this leads to this halving operation in the last line where I have to compute m prime over two squared. Uh, it's better to compute um, only uh, a, a single m times z, um, and then in the last line it won't have to be doubled uh, or halved. Um, and it turns out that the rest of the computations can be rearranged to use the same number of operations, so overall you save one halving. So this is the, the baseline for the, the formulas that I'll be discussing today. The main observation of the new formulas is that xp is only used to compute the next version of itself, um, xp prime. Um, furthermore, xp prime is only used to compute uh, the next version of xrp, and it's done by subtracting xp prime from something. So that means that you know that xp doesn't have to be part of the state because you can recover it from the other variables of the state, m, xqp, and xrp. Um, however, it might be that, that um, it doesn't save time to do this, but let's see what happens if we do a substitution here. 
Um, so if we substitute in um, the, the recovered value of XP, um, and then if we substitute um, this XP prime for the XP prime in the last line, and then we do a bunch of algebra, which I don't really have time to get into in this talk, um, then we can come up with a direct formula for computing X prime RP. Uh, however, this direct formula has quite a number of multiplications in it, mostly um, by yp. So we're calculating yp times z times this new intermediate term g. Um, however, we're also calculating um, in this formula yp times z squared, and we don't, or times z cubed, and we don't use z squared or z cubed anywhere else in these formulas. So by rewriting yp z cubed, as yp times z times g times k, which shares a very large common sub-expression with this last line, uh, we can save quite a few multiplications um, in it uh, on top of that. Um, and so uh, in the end, we net out to one multiplication ahead. So 11 multiplications per bit, um, three of which are squarings plus seven additions. Uh, you can also massage these slightly to turn one of the multiplies into a squaring at the cost of a couple additions. Um, and so this is generally the form of the manipulations that I did to produce the, uh, the other formulas in this paper. There's not necessarily a deep new insight, but just the observation that um, in these uh, existing formulas from 2017, uh, some of the variables might be redundant or might not be computed in the optimal way. Um, and instead calculating some difference of them or some uh, calculating them in some different way uh, might produce a better result. So this uh, new Montgomery ladder, as I said, takes uh, 11 multiplies and seven adds, um, and it parallelizes uh, on either two or three parallel units. So you could get it down to uh, a latency of only four multiplies. Um, uh, it also requires uh, six field registers worth of memory, which is pretty efficient. Um, it also has an advantage over previous work that it doesn't reuse the output of the ladder step within the ladder step itself. Um, and this gives an advantage for uh, against correlation attacks. Um, there's also a different Montgomery ladder pr presented in the paper. So this stores um, YQ and YR instead of YP. Um, and it uh, uses, it, it can be simplified down to the same uh, eight multiplies, three squares and seven adds, but it has a parallel version that slightly, has slightly more operations, but they're all parallelized four ways. So the total latency is only three multiplication latencies and three addition latencies. Um, this makes it competitive with the most efficient formulas for the Montgomery ladder on Montgomery curves if you have a four-way SIMD machine. Um, I've also got a new formula for the Joie ladder. Um, so as I uh, remarked towards the beginning of this talk, the Joie ladder uses the same ladder step as the Montgomery ladder. Uh, however, the representations of the points need to be slightly different because you have to be able to swap P and Q instead of swapping uh, Q and R. Um, in particular, uh, you can't just have a Y coordinate stored for P without having one stored for Q. So computing that extra Y coordinate ends up costing, um, after some simplifications, one extra multiply. Um, so the Joie ladder uh, uh, with our formulas is slightly less efficient than the Montgomery ladder. It does, however, use less memory, and in fact, less memory than any other uh, prime field elliptic curve formulas I'm aware of. It only needs five field registers, um, plus the scalars and the curve constants. Um, and in fact, you can do the setup and the finalization of the ladder with only those five field registers. So you could do the entire operation with very little memory. So how do we do the setup? Um, now, if you have X and Y and you need to compute uh, coordinates of P and 2P, um, then you can do this easily using uh, formulas that you would find on the internet. Um, however, if you have only the X coordinate, it's not totally obvious how to do this. And the reason is that um, you don't have Y. Um, and so how are you going to compute Y times Z cubed? Now you do have Y squared from the curve equation, right? It's X cubed plus AX plus B. Um, so it turns out that if you set z equals y, then all the coordinates that you have to compute um, are only functions of y squared and not just of y. Um, and so that means that you can compute them using the, the y squared that you would recover from the curve equation. Um, a, a second interesting question is how do we uh, finalize the ladder, which is to say, given the ladder state that more or less represents xz squared and yz cubed for the three points, um, how do we recover x and y? Well, we just divide through by z, but the latter state doesn't contain z, so we need to solve for z. Um, if we're doing the Montgomery ladder, then this p in the ladder is the same as the base point, 
And that means that if we've stored the uh, initial uh, point, then we um, have both that and uh, its coordinates scaled by z squared and z cubed. From this, it's easy to solve for z or for one over z um, and then uh, clear the denominators. Except it doesn't work if the original point had an x-coordinate of zero, in which case we would divide zero by zero. So this technique is only working on the Montgomery ladder and only on curves where uh, xp equals zero is not a possibility. However, there's another way to finalize the elliptic uh, curve uh, ladder um, using curve invariance. So uh, if you take the curve equation and you intersect it with a line, then you get a cubic equation in x um, furthermore, you know the three roots of this cubic equation. Um, and so because the coefficients of a cubic equation depend on the roots um, in the way shown on this slide, um, you can recompute the curve uh, coefficients a and b, which presumably you also have stored in a ROM or something somewhere. Um, however, when you do this, you get a times z to the fourth and b times z to the sixth because they have a different number of factors of x in them. Um, and so by dividing these two, you can solve for z squared, or 1 over z squared, uh, which will give you the x-coordinate of the output. You can combine this um, on the Montgomery ladder with uh, the previous slide, um, where you can get z cubed from y z cubed, um, and that will also allow you to extract y p. Um, uh, however, on the Joie ladder, this only allows you to output x. Uh, it furthermore requires that the, the curve coefficients a and b are not equal to zero, so it won't work on sec p256k1, but that curve doesn't have any points with x equals zero, so you can use the previous slide for that curve. Um, in other cases, for example, if you want to use the Joie ladder but also output the y-coordinate, um, you can do this by tracking z. Uh, just add it to the ladder state, and you'll have to multiply it by something on every ladder step, so it costs you an extra multiply per bit, but otherwise it basically just works. Um, so uh, a final question that we might ask is, are these ladder formulas complete, or do they have failure cases? But you already know the answer to this. They're co-z formulas, and therefore they always fail if they encounter z equals zero, in particular if they encounter the neutral point. Um, in fact, the neutral point is the only way that this can happen, and they're otherwise complete. Um, and so for prime curves, you can sort of work out that, uh, at least in the, the common case, um, there are only at most four different scalars for which you will see a failure. And in fact, some of them are like the scalar zero. So um, uh, those sort of can't be salvaged anyway. They're, the answer is the point at infinity. Um, and so if you're using this for ECDH, for example, then you might just say, well, the probability is negligible that any of this happens because the scalar is a uniformly random value that's not influenced by the adversary. However, in some applications, you might want perfect correctness. And for this, you need to construct a ladder that avoids the neutral point. Um, so uh, we have a way to avoid this, at least if the, the curve doesn't have any tiny prime factors. It, its order is not divisible by 2 or by 3. And the way to do this is to, um, is to track the number of ways that the neutral point can occur. Um, so remember, the ladder step takes p, q, and r to p, q plus r, and 2 r, uh, give or take a sign. Uh, so I'll, I'll just be sort of ignoring sign here because it depends on, on swaps, so details are in the paper. Um, so if the curve's order is odd, then you can't encounter, um, you can't have 2r equals the neutral point unless like the state is already at the neutral point. Um, so the only way that you fail is if q equals minus r so that q plus r is o. Um, and then this also means that because you know that p plus q equals r, you have p equals 2q or perhaps minus 2q. Um, and then once you're in the neutral state, there's also only uh, a few ways that it can go. So for the Montgomery ladder, um, you can stay in the neutral state, um, the same neutral state, or uh, you can uh, go to, to this other state, uh, which ends up being 2q, 2q, and 4q up to sign. Um, so uh, let's, let's map that out. So you have a state that starts 2q, q, and q. Um, and then uh, you sort of add or subtract these, right? And you'll end up with uh, zero. Um, so that would cause a, a failure um, in a cozy ladder. Um, and then finally, you'll go to 2q, 2q, 4q. Um, uh, or you'll stay in that state for some number of ladder steps um, by laddering it, you know, swapped. Um, and, then, and then later, you'll exit to 2q, 2q, 4q. Um, so what we can do, though, is that we can um, do a different permutation on the state. Um, and this will allow us to sort of shadow um, uh, the state of, 
of the, the Montgomery ladder that would fail because it would go through the neutral point um, without actually going through the neutral point in, um, in that representation. So the way we do this is that we swap the first two points and then applying the ladder step goes to the state Q, 3Q, 2Q, um, which we call the shadow state because it sort of shadows the, the, the neutral zone without actually going there. Um, and this shadow state, um, if you permute it and apply the ladder operation, you get back to the same state. Um, so you can, you can track as long as the, um, the sort of ladder you're shadowing um, is in this neutral state, um, you can stay in the shadow state uh, using ladder operations. And then when the, when the, ladder, that, the ladder that you're shadowing um, sort of exits to the state 2Q, 2Q, 4Q, then you can do a different permutation of this state and then you'll end up um, in the correct output state. Again, up to sign. And the details are in the paper. Um, actually, I should say that the details are in the auxiliary material whose URL is given on this slide uh, because while well, there's this whole state machine, a complicated arrangement of swaps and so on, so it has more detail than really fits into the 20 pages. Um, this uh, ladder which dodges the neutral point is slightly slower. Um, it needs the extra Y coordinate just like the Joie ladder. Um, because you have to swap all three points instead of just two of them. Um, however, you don't need to use this representation for every iteration of the ladder, um, even if you're going for perfect correctness, um, because you can't get to the neutral point immediately, but only after some number of iterations. So with the, the common case, which is the, a prime order curve, um, you can't get to the neutral point until like the last two iterations. So you don't need to do anything special um, until the very end. Um, so this means that uh, while the uh, complete version of these uh, curve operations is significantly more complicated, um, it's not actually that much slower and it's entirely a viable option if you really need perfect correctness. Um, so that's all. Um, and please direct any questions to me during the question section. Here are the references.